Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Com. All right, Joe, you've got to take us back to that, that story. I've got to know what happened with the Polaroids. Yeah. Well, um, the show's been, it's been featured on several TV shows, like, uh, Unexplained Mysteries, whatever. Mm-hmm. The last show that covered it was Fact or Fake Paranormal Files. And the investigators there were sure that they were going to debunk the whole thing. They did. In, they set up a lab experiment, and they replicated photos that they felt were, you know, good uh, copies, basically. Right. Although, honestly, they weren't. They, they had a different kind of, they had a reddish tint, which none of the Ghost Rider photos have. Um, they showed up at the house, and they actually set up all their equipment exactly as they had it set up in the lab, and they mm-hmm. thought that they were, it was a slam dunk that they were going to debunk this, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't, they were getting other weird things appearing on their film that, that they didn't put on there, and they just, they finally were baffled, and they, no matter what they tried, they could not, you know, replicate huh. the photos in the house. And then they actually did a voice stress analysis of my friends when they interviewed them about it. Mm-hmm. And the voice stress showed that they weren't lying, basically. So in the end, they had to declare that they felt that it was a legitimate case. And the same thing with Kerry Gaynor, who he at one point said that he's investigated like thousands of cases of paranormal through UCLA. And he felt that the only two that were seemed to be authentic were the entity case and the ghostwriter case, basically. Um, so the mystery still lives so, on. It still lives on. And apparently they still get, they communicate now, they've been trying with digital film, but mm-hmm. it's not the same as Polaroid because obviously it's a lot harder. It would be, you know, the, uh, the fact is that their Polaroids have been seen developing on video. You know, they've shown, so some people have suggested that they play with the emulsions, but that's not the case. Um, there, because I, I actually have a friend named Michael Dare who's an artist who does that, and I know how that's done, and it's definitely not the case here. I mean, it's this is uh, whatever's causing them. It's not, you know, manipulation. Basically, it's really it's a, it's a crazy thing. And T- tell me, what what, except do, lawn. what do you think it is? Okay, it's not there. Um, I think it probably is a spirit that is um, like an advanced spirit. You know, that came back because mm-hmm. it's been had a very positive effect on the lives of the people in the house. Um, the two Johns were both struggling in their careers, and when it started, they both were wanted, you know, to be screenwriters and get in the movie industry. And they had had been banging their heads against the wall for a long time, and then finally, with their encouragement, they kept writing and writing. And then they finally had their first feature made, and then they basically, you know, have had other things successes since then. Um, and then there was another person, Noel, who moved into the house also, and he was at. Loose ends when he moved in, they took mm-hmm. him in because he was going through a, a crisis, and the spirit started to it hadn't communicated for a few years because the other guys had gotten their lives together. Then it started to communicate with Noel and uh, sort of helped him to sort of get focused and wow. you know get his life in order. So I think it's a positive spirit basically that just happens to be able to to communicate and you know appear on that property. And I also think that there are geophysical aspects of, mm-hmm. you know, spirit materialization. And uh, and I think their property is, is, you know, it's set in the middle of the woods up on this rocky, I think that it's just the right kind of atmosphere for a portal, which is what Peter James, the psychic, said is on their property, basically. In fact, a few psychics have a, a, 
a visit at the property, and they always point to the same spot, which is right near that bathroom door where the first picture was taken. They didn't know anything about that. They came in and they said that that's what the psychic, you know, vortex was where these spirits come through. Hey, Joe, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a great pleasure. Continued success. And I'd love to have you back on in the future to discuss more of your tales and to see if there's anything else that's happened in your home. (laughs) Joe, take care of yourself. That would be great. All right, Joe. Exonation, my great pleasure. Joe Augustin has been my guest this hour, www.wildcatpress.net. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the hour. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. 